to talk about how to get a good sound check because before you can get things started, a lot of times, man, we, we shoot ourselves in the foot by hurrying up on a Sunday morning and we just like get right into the songs or our rehearsal and we don't take the time to make sure we hear ourselves, that we hear everybody else. And it's so critical, especially if you're the worship leader, especially if you're anybody on the team. But as a worship leader, I know that sometimes if I can't hear my voice, if I can't hear certain things, like the hi-hat, like the bass, you know, then I, I won't be able to find pitch. It won't be able to find the timing. So this is not the perfect sound check, but we're going to go around. This is the way we do sound checks, and it's, it, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> it works. <laughs> so, it works. Awesome. so uh, in my opinion, so a lot of times you got to start somewhere. So a lot of times maybe we'll just get a couple vocal mics going so that way we can hear each other. And we happen to have in-ears for this particular event, and we have uh, a monitor guy, okay? Now, back in my home church, I use floor widgets, floor monitors. I don't have in-ears. So, but it's the same thing. I make sure that everybody in the band starts with. So maybe you can start with a couple vocalists, all right? So uh, I say, I turn to the, our monitor mixer guy. Tell me your first name again. Jesse. Hey, Jesse. So he's your new best friend. <laughs> because, seriously, because obviously he's the one, he or she, whoever's going to be mixing for you, you know, they, they basically, they got you in the palms of their hands or their fingertips, and they can always pull you down. So just sounds like it doesn't even need to be said, but sometimes we get a little bit under pressure. We're intense, man. Just, just respect whoever's doing sound, whoever's doing monitors, whoever's doing front of house. Say, hey, excuse me, when you get a second... Um, just got, you know, can you give me a little more of this? Should go without saying, but here we go. So Jesse is our monitor guy, so I'll just start making sure we all will go around. Can you guys hear me? Got Paul. Okay, and like, so everybody in the band will like raise their hand if they're good. Actually, can you bring Paul down just a tad? Okay. So Michael wants less of me. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, no offense taken. Perfect, Perfect. thank you. One, two, check. One, two. Everybody, we go around. Everybody good for starters? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Can I hear everybody else's mic? Just kind of. Jerry, hey, Paul. Hey, Michael. hey. Check. One, two. Okay. Hey, check. hey. One, two. Got me. Got Ben, Carl. I'm good. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? I'll All take right, maybe a, just a little more of Carl. Check. One, two. Hey, Ben needs more of Carl. Yeah, perfect. Thank Beautiful. you. Okay. Good. So once we have a vocal thing, then a lot of times we like to go back to the drums. We start with like kick. Kick, snare, hi hat. Um, Carl, at any time, you know, any of you guys, feel yeah. free to jump in, like sound check wise. Yeah. Yeah, but and as uh, remember too, as they're dialing in like different things, they're adjusting uh, gain structures too. So even though you're getting a little bit in your ears, your monitor, don't, you know, don't feel bad about asking for something different once you're in the middle of a song or once you're going through a check. In fact, we've already kind of checked the drums a little, but I could use just a touch more of my kick. I'd use maybe a little bit more of that, too. Okay. That's good. good and actually, good. can can we EQ a little bit on that? I'd take a little bit of that mid-range. I don't know if it's yep. 500, 600. Sometimes in a kick drum, that's a real dirty frequency. Drummers, sound people. Just remember, uh, yeah, that feels a little better. And maybe just a, a touch more on the top end. Sorry I'm being picky on that's EQ, good. but there you go. Yeah, pushing, okay. pushing the lows. Uh, I'm getting enough flow in, but okay, maybe it's my... this is, and you got to be aware too, if everybody's on ears or your monitors, what you're asking for in an EQ can affect what everybody else has to hear. So you got to kind of work together like this kind of situation. You can give and take on that. Right. And again, you're going to adjust as you play songs together too. Yeah. So everybody good now with kids? Yeah. So right now we're just trying to get a big picture right now and then we'll dial in in a second. But right now, everybody got enough kick drum? Kick. Okay, now hi-hat. I'll have just a little bit more, please. So see our hands are up in the air, indicating I'll take more. This means I'm okay. Like that's okay, that means a little more, that means a little less. Uh, little it's pretty bit. intense. I'm good? Cool. You guys good? good? All right, here comes the snare. A lot of times, 
the hi-hat mic is going to pick up the snare. So sometimes yeah. that's enough for me, just FYI. But I do want to say, the thing about the hi-hat, let's go back. Can you play that, Carl? It's important to have enough hi-hat, and you may not have known this, or maybe you do know, but make sure you hear that subdivision. That's going to be really important once the band is. Let's just all just play like a G, like a G chord thing over that groove. One, two. Just wanted to make sure that hi hat. Take. Make sure you're getting enough of that, because you may not have known you needed that. Singers too, background singers. You know, make sure you're getting that. I think it's really helpful, so that you don't rush ahead. You know, sonically. So, take just a little less kick and snare. Just a bit. Less. So as he's playing. I'd like to point something out too that while we're sound checking, like these guys aren't talking about the football game last night, and these guys aren't like saying, Hey, did you see that movie last week? It's like once you start dialing into the sound check focus, I find that sometimes, especially background singers, not to pick on you, but can really be like, Oh, and blah, 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 and blah, blah. And it's like, I just think it's important that at this point when you're doing your sound check, you usually don't have a lot of time. So it's like, Okay, let's dial in, let's focus. So I just wanted to point that out. So after we've kind of done drums, you got tom-toms, overheads. and Yeah, I mean, you could decide if you want. Yeah. A lot of times the other band members, if you give them some overhead mics, they'll hear toms and cymbals. That, you know, it's up to every individual, but yeah, I think we've got all that already. Good. You guys good. good? The next thing out, bass. Like, I'm thinking, I want to hear that groove with a bass. Do you mind just playing that? Thinking, yeah, I can hear that. I'm good. So I just let the monitor guy. Yep. You good, Jared? Cool. All right, now acoustic guitar, maybe. And then where'd you go to like six? So acoustic guitar. Just picking a random progression. Anybody want more acoustic? Everybody good? So a little more acoustic. Okay. Get right there, and then let's let's think about the piano. A little piano. Acoustic down just a touch for me. Acoustic down a little bit. I could take a little less piano actually. Yeah. Yeah, split split the difference on the piano. You can come back up just a notch, Jess. Yeah. Yeah, that's working. Yeah. And this is good too because like don't don't play for 10 minutes if you're dialing in a sound check. You know, sometimes True. bands just want to jam. Don't jam for 10 minutes. Work with your engineers. Really get that mix. Stop yep. after four bars if you can't be clear about what you need right. to communicate. So, right. Really yeah. good. Cool. So anything else? Anything we're missing? Electric guitar? Uh, stems, I don't think we got. Uh, I'm going to take just a bit more electric. Okay. <laughs> a bit more Always. electric? <laughs> Let's not skate through that too quick. Sounds really good. Um, I can hear that. Yep. Do you need anything else? Do we just check the stems here? Sure. So stems or loops, okay? Some people call them loops. Some people call them stems. 
And it's basically using your laptop or mostly, most of the time it's on a laptop and there's sort of pre-recorded drums or, you know, kind of rhythmic things. And these guys are laughing at me. I don't know what the kids call them these days, but back in my day, we called them loops. And I don't mean fruit loops. So, uh, you know, it just kind of fills in a little bit. And I don't always use them at my church, but you know, in certain events, certain situations, I use them. And uh, I'll just maybe say quickly with that, um, some of the loops are just, just a percussive loop that we play to, and some of them we're actually listening to a click track as well as the, the tracks we stay lined up. Uh-huh. So we're hearing just getting both, getting both of those things in our ears. Yeah. So loops, we're just going to get, it's almost like a click track. <laughs> click track. That should be rolling click. to you there. I'll, t- I'll have a little more uh, loop, please. I've got plenty of click, but no loops yet. I have nothing yet. I have nothing. So that's we're good. indicating we want more by the lifting of the hand. <laughs> wow, that's plenty. I'll have a little less. Thank you. Thanks, Jess. I want to just hit a little bit of that. You got Hosanna, possibly? Two, three, four. Should hear the click there. Okay. I'll take a little more of the click, Jess. That's good. Thank you. Cool. Good. All right. About the Hosanna click, possibly? Or loop. Okay. So there's, I don't know if you can hear that. That's kind of the beginning of Hosanna. Carl's counting off. Praise is rising. Eyes are turned. We turn to you. Hope is. I'll have a little more loop, please. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Thank you. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. Fears are washed away, washed away. about there is a good time like you just do a little bit of a song and that's where you can maybe just tweak a little bit more and just decide are you good Carl you got everything you need I could use a little more of Paul's lead vocal okay just Any, anybody else want something different yeah I'll take more of Paul's vocal as well one two yeah I'm with you okay wow yours is pretty hot yeah it's <laughs> <That's> nice <laughs> I think Another thing on what you're saying is it's important that you start, when you're starting sound checks, starting with the open mics. Yeah. Especially the, like the lead vocal yeah. and the, the background vocals, getting those straight because as you start checking the rest of the band, the, vol- the stage volume and bleed, everything starts playing into that. So if you don't start with that, you get a ton of kick and then you start checking your mic, you're going right. to have a ton of kick on top of so that. So you're saying always start with the mics first. Yeah, it's great to start with open vocal mics. Um, as a reference point. What does open vocal mics mean? Like, as opposed to, like, you don't want to start with that open hi-hat mic. You're wanting right. just your vocal mics. Right. There isn't a such thing as a closed vocal mic. <laughs> like, there's no pickup you can put on your throat. 
I just wondered if it was a term. I want to make sure. Nah, I just made that up. Open vocal. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Openvocal.com. Yeah. Hey, Jess, can I get a little more drum overheads in the drum mix, please? Any other quick, that's good, Michael. Any other uh, things sound check wise that in your experience you're like, man, here's one more thing, or, or Jared, any of you guys? Just one, one quick keep thought it, on go, uh, keeping your mics. Like, it's, if your drum, I mean, if my mic is pointed straight at the drums, I'm going to be getting a lot of drums. It's good to just try and angle your mics away from, vocal mics especially, vo um, angling them away from the drums, the cymbals particularly, will overtake a vocal mic very quickly. That's really good. That's really good. Everybody get that. Make sure your mic, if you can help it. Now, normally, of course, I'm facing, we're all facing together. This would be like a rehearsal. Like normally I'd obviously turn around, <laughs> but we're kind of doing this because it's a good way to have a rehearsal. Many times I'll do that during rehearsals, turn the, my mic this way, and that way I'm facing the band. But so just make sure the mic isn't like right in front of the splash cymbal or something like that. So that's a great point. Yeah. Uh, Jared, any other thoughts or... Uh, a lot of guys play, you know, will request wedges or or have play one ear, one ear in, one ear out yeah. to kind of feel the room, yeah. um, which is not really great for your ears. But I understand, mm. like, leading, you really want to have a sense of where the room is. Right. Sometimes, um, if, as a player, if you're, if, you're, if you're backing up a leader or you're not leading, it's really good yeah. just to have both ears in, really focus and harness it, you know, harness your sound mm. and dive in on that and leave the kind of the crowd feel ambiance yeah. uh, for whoever's leading so they can kind of lead well. You yeah. Know, and so you can play well. You know, a good, a good solution to the open ear thing for those sing um, a lot of singers one feel the room. You could get in ears that have a more open back rather than something that's sealed so tight yeah and that way you got great monitors yep. and you're getting uh, yeah like you said you know you want to try to keep both in ears in if you're doing this so you don't get hearing damage yeah but uh yeah you can find them where they do open up the back more so another trick of course is if you are using in ears having a mic or two that's like discreetly pointed towards the audience and you ask the monitor guy for a little bit of that in your ears that way, um, that way, like Jared said, as a worship leader, it can be odd. If you can't hear people singing, it's hard to get a sense of where the room is and what the, you know, where you need to go. So very, very important. Yeah. Any other thought, Ben? Uh, I'd say just if you are using open wedge monitors to err on the side of not tons of volume at first. Because if everyone's getting, it can become an easy volume battle with everyone's wedges on stage. Mm -hmm. One person's wedge is really loud. You know, half the stage is hearing from that. They're wanting more of themselves than there was. So just erring on the side of just as much as you need as opposed to cranking That's good. open wedges. That's really good. Um, yeah, start off. Don't expect to get 100% of what you want monitor-wise. Like, I find that, uh, you know, if you can get 80% of what you want, be happy with that. Um, get it close there, but don't get all frustrated and be like, I still can't hear myself, and all I hear is the drums, or blah, blah, blah. It's like, man, if, if, it's, if, if it's pretty good, then, like, at some point you have to go, okay, we got to get started. Yeah. But do take as much time as you can. That was the point of this whole, this little exercise here, is to say, take the time to hear yourself, again, from a, a worship leading standpoint. If I can't hear myself, if I can't hear the, the timing, if I can't hear the players, and especially if I can't hear my voice, the, the, the pitch, man, it messes me up. And instead of like relaxing in my spirit and being able to just freely kind of encourage people and do the things that we, we've been praying about doing that week and longing to see people connect, man, it becomes, in my, instead, I'm just fighting to get through the song. I'm just like, ah, I can't hear myself. I wish I could. I can't hear myself. It's almost over. If I can just make it through the song, you know? <laughs> Seriously. And it's just like, I've been there and it's frustrating because you don't feel like, mm. yeah. and it all goes back to just taking the time this time. So cool.